Hi class, this is Sir Alex Basco and welcome to our lesson in General Biology 2. Today we are discussing what happens to DNA after it's replicated and that is transcription and translation. For part 1 of lesson 2, we'll be focusing mostly on transcription. And for part 2, which we will discuss later on, we're going to be talking about translation. So before we head on and discuss transcription, let's first understand what would be the goals of today's lesson. At the end of this lesson, lesson 2, what I want everyone to understand and be able to do is first discuss the central dogma of biology. So what is it all about? Central dogma of biology is basically DNA and then RNA and then protein. So it's basically telling us what happens or the process of DNA and the production of proteins, which basically <clears throat> leads to gene expression. So we're going to discuss a little bit about that later, as well as be able to describe the process of transcription, translation, and protein synthesis. So let's head on and discuss what is DNA transcription. DNA transcription is the first step on what we call a gene expression. So gene expression, uh, if you guys remember what a gene is, genes is basically the, <clears throat> um, the code that is in your DNA that results in a lot of the features that you have. So you may have curly hair, you may have a straight hair, you may have a lighter complexion, a darker complexion, black eyes, brown eyes, you may be tall, you may be short. A lot of those are being encoded from your DNA. A lot of the influences that you got based on the physical appearances that you have comes from the genes on the DNA. And all of these are being expressed uh, through via what we call proteins. Okay, so we encode these expressions, these genes, these codes into proteins which will be which will result in the translation into our physical bodies or the, what we call the phenotype. <coughs> So how do we actually do that? So the first thing that we have to do after replicating the DNA is we need to transcribe the DNA. So the first process is transcription. The end goal of transcription is for us to make, or in this case, the cell, to make an RNA copy of the gene's DNA sequence. So the, <clears throat> the gene that you want to express is encoded on the DNA. And what you want to do first is copy that DNA and make it into an RNA copy. So you're basically what transcription is, transcript, transcribe means to copy. And all of this happens in the nucleus. And that makes sense because the DNA is in the nucleus. And once you guys remember this, it happens in the nucleus. Some of the things that I want you guys to uh, think about, uh, so here's a little bit of a picture of the dogma of uh, <clears throat> of the biology. So you have your DNA, you have your RNA here, and you have your polypeptide, which is your protein. And all of this happens through transcription and translation. And as I mentioned, we'll be discussing transcription. So one of the things that I want you guys to remember are some of the words right here. First is template strand. Template strand is the strand in the DNA that is being used to copy the RNA. Basically, that is this, this is the part of the DNA uh, that is being copied to make the RNA transcript. So if you can see right here, you have your DNA. And when you start copying this DNA, it actually opens up, creating a two-strand. Uh, because uh, remember, DNA is a double-stranded. It's a double helix DNA. So there's two, uh, basically there's two sides. Uh, and what happens during DNA transcript, transcription is it opens up and then you copy a part of the gene. All of this process we'll discuss later on. But the, uh, the strand that is being copied is what we call the template strand. So as you can see here, the RNA is copying the template strand. Or it's not basically copying it, it's basically transcribing it. Next is what we call the coding strand. The coding strand is basically the strand of the DNA that is not being used. But what's interesting about the coding strand is basically it's very similar or almost identical to the RNA copy. The only difference is the T in the DNA is being changed to U in the RNA. So instead of having a T in the RNA, you have a U. As you can see here, at the beginning of this coding strands, you have your A in the RNA that is being copied during transcription. You would expect to have an A. But for T, you would have a U 
GG. As you can see, it's basically almost uh, identical to the DNA except for the U and the RNA. So that is the code. That's why we call it the coding strand because it's uh, almost identical to the RNA. And the template strand is the strand in the DNA that is being used to create the, or the RNA transcript. RNA polymerase is the enzyme responsible in transcription. Uh, so remember this words right here, template strand, coding strand, the RNA polymerase. Okay, so again, this is the, uh, the RNA polymerase is the enzyme that is, be, is used to copy the template strand to create the RNA transcript. And another thing that is interesting is the RNA polymerase creates <clears throat> the RNA copy in a 5 to 3 direction. So as you can see right here, uh, this, let's have this RNA right here, let's have this red dot right here as your RNA polymerase. What it does is it copies the template strand from 3 to 5 directions. So meaning you start from here, this is the 3 of the template strand, this is the 5 of the template strand, this is the 5 end. And the RNA polymerase, uh, <coughs> polymerase, uh, creates or builds the RNA copy, this uh, red, this pink line right here, in a uh, 5 to 3 direction, meaning this is your 5, and it adds those nucleotides in the third end, or in the 3 end. Okay, so I want you guys to remember that. Meaning the template strand is 3 to 5, while the RNA copy is five to three directions. So the nucleotides are being added on the third end. So now let's discuss how this transcription happens. What are the three stages of transcription? So the stages of transcription, the first one is what we call initiation. So what happens in initiation? Simply initiation means to start, to initiate, to start something. During the initiation process, the RNA polymerase binds on the promoter sequence of the DNA. So the promoter is a sequence, basically it's a code found on the DNA that the RNA polymerase uses a signal for it to know where to bind on the DNA. And after it binds onto the DNA, again RNA polymerase is an enzyme, it can move and it can bind onto the DNA. And once it binds to the promoter sequence of the DNA, it will open the DNA. Remember, the DNA is a double strand, so you can open it up. The same way that happens when you copy the DNA, you want to open it up. But for uh, initiation of the transcription of DNA, the RNA polymerase is the one doing all of this. It finds the promoter sequence in the DNA, and then it opens the double strand. So you can think of it this way. So this is your DNA right here. <clears throat> And you have this sequence found, and it's called the promoter sequence. And I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but there's a blurry circle, kind of like at the back of the DNA. You can think of this as your RNA polymerase, as it binds to that promoter. And then, using that as a signal to binding, it opens the DNA. So now, you have, from double strand, you have a separate single strand of DNA. And remember where, which one is being copied by the DNA. It's the one, uh, the, the DNA that is being copied should be the one, um, uh, the, what we call the template strand. So this is, we can use this as a template strand or that as a template strand. Okay, so that's what happens in the first stage of transcription. The second state of transcription is called elongation. So elongation means from the word, you know, like long means pahabain. So we are basically making things longer. In this case, what we're making things longer, that's a keyword that I want you guys to remember, is the RNA. So what happens is the RNA polymerase will read the template, will read the template strand, and this starts to build the RNA transcript. I want you guys to remember the direction. The direction of the building of the RNA is from 5 to 3 direction, meaning the nucleotides are being added on the 3 end of the RNA. And the DNA that is being copied is from 3 to 5. So in this case, you have your five, 3 to 5 right here. So this becomes aware 
template strand because this is 3 to 5 and we know this would be the 5 end of the RNA right here and then we're going to build the 3 end of the RNA. So it's something like this. So the RNA will start to build and copy the DNA, <coughs> the DNA strand. <coughs> okay, so as you can see right here, yeah, the RNA is from the 5 to 3 direction. Remember, the 3 direction is where you add the DNA. So it's the opposite of the DNA template. Okay, so this is your template strand and the coding strand. Remember, the coding strand is the strand of the DNA that is not being used to copy or to create the RNA transcript, but it kind of like similar to the RNA except for the T and the use. So during this elongation process, we are creating this long RNA. So the RNA polymerase, this enzyme, it starts to build this RNA right here by copying the template strand. What happened next is what we call termination. In the world itself, termination means to stop. This is how we end the transcription. The sequence in the DNA, you know, you have uh, the RNA polymerases will finally because it will move, this RNA polymerase moves along template strand as it copies the template strand. That kind of like makes sense, right? Because if it's not going to move, how it's going to copy this part right here that it wants to copy. So as this RNA polymerase moves, it will finally end up in what we call a sequence called terminator. So the promoter at the initiation is where the RNA uses as a signal to know where it binds and opens the DNA. But in the termination, in the terminator signal or the terminator sequence, again, is a code of sequence found in the DNA that when the RNA polymerases arrives, it terminates the copying of the RNA, which means it's a signal that the RNA transcript is completed. It's fully copied. It's done. And then the, it uses that terminator as a signal to release or for the RNA polymerase to release Basically, to seal the DNA from opening it up, it will close it and then it will leave. <clears throat> so, similar something like this. So, when the RNA polymerase finally reads the terminator uh, sequence right here, uh, and one thing that it does is, for example, it, uh, it can result to a lot of things. For example, the terminator right here, it can result into this clip like. Uh, shape of the RNA and when this happens the RNA knows that the RNA is completely copied it's done and when that happens the RNA polymerases release the RNA and then releases the DNA so what you ended, ended up having is a separated or you have an RNA polymerase a DNA that just been copied and then the product is this RNA right here this red strand so that is the three stages of transcription, initiation, elongation, and termination. So what happens next? After copying the DNA and creating the RNA, what happens next is depending, it, it depends on the creature. If we have, a, uh, for example, if you have a prokaryote or for example, the bacteria, the RNA transcript that, just, um, that was just made it can act as a messenger RNA. Messenger RNA or mRNAs is basically the RNA that is being used to create the protein in the process of translation, which we will discuss on part two. Again, so after the three stages of transcription, if you're a bacteria, you're gonna use that RNA to finally make the proteins. If you are not a bacteria, means, you, uh, for example, most likely, you're a eukaryote if you're a eukaryote which we are humans or eukaryote uh, in humans the created RNA is not what we call a messenger mRNA it's what we call pre mRNA it is not immediately used to create the proteins what happens is that if you're a eukaryote which we are as a human we're going to take that RNA that we just copied from the DNA and we have to process it because that RNA that was copied or that just that was just created is called a pre-mRNA. And what we're going to do is we have to create an mRNA. 
and how does that happen? So here's a little picture right here. I'm going to explain the modifications that will happen on the pre-mRNA. So imagine this red line right here as the RNA that was copied. The first thing that will happen is the pre-mRNA uh, will be added a 5 and cap and a 3 and poly A tail. So at the 5 end of the RNA, the basically the start, because sure, this is where you were adding, the 3 end is where you were adding the nucleotides in the RNA, you would uh, add a what we call a cap. So you can imagine this G as your cap right here. This is the end cap. So we call it the 5 end cap. And then in the 3 end cap, you're going to add what we call a poly A tail. So this is basically a nucleotide sequence of four of basically A's. So you have A, adenosine, adenosine, adenosine. So this is basically just a tail of A, 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 A nucleotide added on the third end of your RNA. So that's the first thing that will happen. After adding these two ends or these two uh, basically the cap and the tail on your pre-mRNA, we're going to, what we call, uh, we're going to splice it. So what uh, what is this splicing? Splicing is basically we're going to remove some parts. So many eukaryotic pre-mRNAs uh, undergo what we call a splicing. In splicing, um, we're not going to go into details on uh, which enzyme is used to do which one but just uh, think of it as basically removing some part of the pre-mRNA. So the parts that we remove out are what we call introns. So some part of the, so this is your pre-mRNA right here, your, uh, some parts, so some nucleotides or some of the, some basically some parts of the pre-mRNA called introns will be removed. And what is remaining is what we call exons. So if this is your introns and this is your introns, these are your exons right here. And what happens is after removing those introns, the exons will be put back together. And this is now what we call from pre-mRNA, we have now what we call a mature mRNA or basically just mRNA. And this is what we use to create the protein during translation. And that protein will, will be the one to express the genes hidden in this mRNA. So what that means is uh, from pre-mRNA, this is the one copied from the DNA, we, uh, we add a 5N cup and then we add a 3L or poly A uh, tail at the 3 end of the mRNA. And then we splice it, removing introns. Uh, remaining the exons, we put those exons together, finally creating our mRNA. Okay, and all of this again is happening in the nucleus. So why are these necessary? Why are these modifications and the splicing necessary? First, the adding, the additions of the endings of our pre uh, on our pre-mRNA uh, stabilizes the creation of the mRNA. If we don't have this, uh, it will be very, very difficult for the mRNA to be stabilized. It can be easily, uh, basically it can be easily, what's the word, deteriorate or decay, something like that. And we need that. We need this because it's uh, going to be used to copy a lot of protein. It's not only going to be used once. It's actually going to be used to create uh, a lot of proteins. So it will be used multiple times. And all of that we're going to discuss during translation. But just remember this, the addition of the end, the five end cup and the three end polytail, poly A tail, it stabilizes the mature mRNA. And in the splicing ensures the proper translation because if you do not remove, some doesn't need to be removed, but many of the pre-mRNAs need splicing. If you do not remove the introns, uh, the protein that you will create from this mRNA would be a gibberish protein. It will be a useless protein. Uh, <clears throat> if you guys remember, protein is basically a chain of poly A peptide. And I'm going to explain all of that later on. But just remember, if we do not remove these introns, the protein that will be created from this 
uh, set of codes right here will be a useless protein. It will not function. Okay, so those are the two important things that happens during RNA modification. So that's all about transcription. If you guys have any question about transcription, do not hesitate to message me. And later we're going to discuss what will happen on this mature mRNA. Thank you so much and you guys have a great day.